happened to you and, and have decided to make Utah home. Yeah, what a privilege it's been to be able to get to know these people. You know, I'm not an athlete. I know you were, Shara, in your younger days. But to be able to, to see them and, and understand the mind of the athlete. You know, back in 2002, Derek Parra wowed the country. He was the darling of those Olympic Games. He won a gold medal in the 1500 meter in speed skating. He also broke a world record that stood for 20 years and I got a chance to sit down with Derek as he retraced his path to victory in 2002 but also looking ahead to 2034. The best skaters in the country are here every day, every morning and every afternoon. They move from their homes back in Connecticut, California, wherever. They're, they're here because they have a dream. They did exactly what I did. They took a chance. Yeah, you're skate sharp? It was much, much more than chance that brought Derek Parra to where he is today. When I'm coming right here, I'm thinking about lining up my... Hard work, passion, and perseverance led Parra to this ice at the Oval in Kerns. That's better, that's better. It's where in 2002, he became an Olympic champion, winning silver in the 5,000 meter, gold in the 1500. And the time for Parra here is... Born on what he calls the wrong side of the tracks in San Bernardino, California. Sports saved my life so many times. I could have go easily gone into crime and drugs where I grew up. Easily. It was right there around me. But meeting some great people on this crazy sport of roller speed skating. Para got his start at 17 in roller speed skating. Eight years later, in 1996, he was the most decorated athlete in the sport ever. At his peak, he then switched sports to inline skating. Stripped of his sponsorships and any prize money, he was back at the bottom, trying to climb his way to the top. And I won a loaf of bread from, I think back there was some kind of like Great Harvest type uh, mom and pops in, in Lake Placid, New York. And I remember, it wasn't even a podium, it was literally on the side of the road. First place, Derek Parr. And I'm like, yeah. And they go, they give you a loaf of bread. And I went, Thank you. And I drove overnight, literally to get there. You know, I almost didn't make the race, driving from Delaware to New York. And I remember eat, driving home, eating the bread. I was just like pulling it off and eating it. That was, that was my reward. But it, it got me on a start, again, that got me to another place that eventually got me to the ice, which got me here today. Para was chasing a dream no matter the cost. At one point, so poor, he was eating food out of McDonald's trash. But he wanted to be an Olympian. And the sport of speed skating was going to get him there. But when you crossed over, particularly into speed skating, they weren't very welcoming in the beginning. No, no, it was, it was, it was very territorial. I mean, if you can imagine, you're an athlete who their your whole life, you're climbing up the ladder, the games are on the horizon, and you've gotten to that top four spot, right? You're, you're going, you think you're going to the games, and these crazy disco skaters come into your sport and they're good like they're we we're good athletes we didn't know how to skate but we we're good athletes so you think we adapted well because the conditions on road compared to the perfect conditions on the ice um we were able to kind of make some changes and we wanted it because we, we didn't have the opportunity to go to the olympics we saw those rings and we wanted it that was our dream para thought he'd reached that olympic dream in nagano Ranked very last, at the last minute, he was knocked out of competition by a skater from Kazakhstan. If I would have competed in 98, I don't, would have never won gold here. I would have competed, said that's it, gone on to college, I would have started life. Para calls it a silver lining. He didn't get his chance that year. In Salt Lake, four years later, he beat a world record in the 1500 meter that stood for 20 years. And I just wanted to go out there and, and leave nothing on the track, right? And he reached gold. When you crossed the 1500 meter line for the Olympics, you wrote, Ben, and my heart filled with a warmth that can only come from rich personal satisfaction <laughs> I have never known before. It's a moment I can't, it can't be duplicated. The Olympics are great because you see that joy, you see that community of people behind these athletes for years on a path for the unknown. If you look back, it was 18 years to get there and the race was a minute and 43 seconds. Do the math. How many times I was out in a park jumping around with a 40 pound weight vest on or riding 100 miles in the weekend, laps and laps and laps, all for an opportunity to, to, 
to try to be your best, or not even the best in the world, just be your best. Five months before he won gold, he walked away from speed skating. The 9-11 terror attacks made him question what he dedicated his life to. I had put so much value on me as a person, on literally going around in circles. That was my life. And then when I saw those bodies being pulled out of the rubble, I was embarrassed to be a speed skater. With the help of the sports psychologist, Para found purpose once again in what he was doing and why. If I'm going to be here on this ice, it has to mean something. There's got to be a bigger purpose than just going fast for, you know, for a metric mile. What's your purpose now? Giving back to those around me. Your skating is super smooth, right? It's very balanced. Today at 54. Are you guys skating? Are you guys warming up next? This you is where you'll find it. Nice, nice. Keep that right shoulder down for the push. At the Olympic Oval, coaching the next generation of athletes to be more than just a champion. It's not just about winning. It's about the journey, right? The people you meet, the, the growth of us internally. Para's path to gold wasn't paved alone. He credits the Legacy Foundation for giving these athletes their own path to victory. That is the Olympic legacy here. That's the Olympic movement, and I am so proud to be a part of it. So lucky to be a part of it. Wow. Wow. Incredible story, Absolutely Lori. Absolutely incredible. incredible story.